Oh yeah, we also get a uh, uh, we get a new enemy type here. It's a drawfid, but fuck. All right. You can see them up there. Well, actually, you kind of can't see them. Cool. That's fine. Before that, there's um, a side area with a bolt. Let's do that first. God, my PlayStation is absolutely chugging. Flint Vorsalon. I never realized that. That is a... Flint Vorsalon is a character that we see in a later Ratchet and Clank game. This is the first time he's ever mentioned. I never noticed that. Oh god, six axis. Up. Uh, nope. You know the six Essex can be disabled in the settings? Yeah, but it's the intended experience. I respect Insomniac too much. Like, I appreciate that they use the technology. Honestly, I'm just used to playing this game with a DualShock 3 and not a six axis, so... not the worst in the world makes the pirate dancing minigame a little weird though you just gotta shake the shit out of the controller that and there we go inmate number 394k mcconagall crow please report to solitary confinement probably i think i think oh shit there we go i think this instance this uh route this side route to get a bolt is probably my favorite use of uh the, the helipods in the game i think it's actually a very smart design for such a specific gadget Before we do anything else. Agreed, yeah. There we 
There we go. And also, a shit ton of... Okay, now we can head inside the prison. Um, let's do this real quick. Welcome to the Quillerant Weapon Shop. I personally use the thruster pack more, but I still see the use of the helipack. I, I see a lot of thruster pack for various styles of play. I stick with the helipack because it's like the quote unquote standard one that's in like every game. It's, it's, you know, like, uh, hang on. Yeah. Like the, the thruster pack I know, especially for speed runs of the early games is way better. Mostly because I combo thruster pack, shock ravager, get even more distance. Yeah. It, it's it's good for mobility, but I don't know. There's just something classic about the helipack. It feels like in cutscenes and stuff. That's like the standard one Clank has. Ah, shit. Um. There we go. Yeah, I see... Uh, just th through various um, people who played this game differently, I see more usage of the thruster pack, but... Yeah, I don't know. There's something about, like... I, I watch a lot of... Ah, Slim. They got my man Slim. I see a lot of speed runs for... <laughs> Ace Hardlight, cool. I love callbacks. Helipack is still useful. Use razor claws if wall climbing is a stuff you like to do. A game not designed around wall climbing. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I see a lot of speed runs for various games that I love, like a lot of um, a lot of uh, platformer speed runs. I don't think I could ever speed run a Ratchet and Clank game just because like I love these games too much and breaking them in half like that, like. I don't know. I feel like it would ruin it. Too many people I know who speedrun, like, they can't play the game casually anymore. And I don't think I could ever... I think I would miss it too much. Let's activate the... Is this doing anything? There we go. Cool. Yeah, I love these games too much to, to bust them in half for speedrunning purposes. I could probably speedrun Jack and Daxter. I'm not good enough to pull off the Shock Ravager glitchy jumps thing. I mean... I... Th I, am in, I am in no way... I think the there's something about... I don't know if it's like the input delay on the PS3 or just the fact that like... Without the rumble pack in the... Like, without the vibration function in the PS3 controller, like the 6-axis, it feels... Like, the PS3 controller feels bad to use. 
IMO, just like in retrospect. I prefer the the DualShock 2 or the DualShock 4. Oh yeah, the thruster the, or the those things. Visicopters. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about it. That's fine. I like the XP. I'm not... Only use the PS3 controllers, so I can't tell the difference between other generations. Ah. Yeah, so the... The 6-axis and the DualShock 3 just have, like, different internals. Uh... It feels like the, I'm just kind of like, I'm not tossing it, but I'm, yeah, it feels weird. I don't know. It also doesn't help that like the console generation, the, like at the time, the other console generations just had better feeling controllers, like. The 360 had a better feeling controller. The God, what was the Nintendo? The Wii, I guess. The Wii had been around for for a little bit. The Wii controllers were that was just it's a whole other thing. Attention all inmates. The Empire has officially suspended all parole hearings because of Lombax threats to neutral. Additionally, pardons will no longer be offered to inmates of Lombax descent. Oh shit. I was trying to get to my uh, quick select to attack that guy, but I guess I'm here now. Reason why I need movement-based stuff in Tools of Destruction is so I can play the game more aggressively. Close to enemies, easier to correct for positional mistakes. Ah. I see. Come on. There we go. That's definitely how I play, like, Ratchet and Clank 1, where, like, uh, since weapons don't level up, you can, you don't really, you can use kind of just whatever you want, so I usually use, like, the, the Walloper, um, I see the, I see a big preference in the Thruster Pack for, uh, Ratchet and Clank 1, like, like, the 2002 Ratchet and Clank. I definitely prefer to get up close and personal in that game. It's really fun on Riken 5 since you can just bounce on the new set of enemies. <laughs> bounce to the new set of enemies. Yeah. I I really like the, the setup for Riken 5. You know, it's such a quick planet. But the, the combat waves definitely feel really good. Um, I think the gyro cycle is a really cool idea. That, there's just so much in this game that uses the the six axis which half of it i would say feels right i would and again i know i know it's optional really but there we go finally yeah i'd say riken 5 is actually a pretty underrated planet uh in in the grand scheme of ratchet and clank Ugh. Like, conceptually, I think this hacking minigame is really cool. It's definitely better than, like, the hacking minigame in Ratchet and Clank 2.
What do you think of the best? What do you think are the best levels in this game? I feel like. Obviously, like Ardolis comes back in in later games, but Tornado Launcher, it Tornado Launcher, it does suck because of six S axis, but at least you can launch the thing at really high speeds. Yeah, um, and if you don't have the six axis equipped, it just kind of sits there. Like you can't really control it without six axis equipped or equipped. You can't turn. You can't really control it with six axis on. I think you can control it with the same stick that the camera moves on so like to control it you have to really nauseate yourself by flicking the camera around but i have not gotten the tornado launcher yet in this playthrough i'm kind of avoiding it i'm waiting at least until the late game when um it'll just get insane amount of xp very quickly so i don't have to use it for too long Lean it down. But yeah, what are what are your uh, favorite levels in this game? I personally think like Ardolus gets just as much love as it deserves. Like it was big enough to come back in like later games. But like I'm a big fan of swamp levels, so like Sargasso is really cool to me. Uh Kabalia for being like the First quote and unquote level. Using a speed boost from something like boost you can do. Entire arena in half a sec. Jacindo is up there for me. Yeah. Jacindo is really cool. Can't wait to get there. I think this level is pretty cool. Like Zordoom Prison. The idea of a jailbreak. Like it still fits the... Uh, Ratchet and Clank level design logic. Yeah, see Ratchet, she is here, idiot. Maybe I'll listen to Clank more next time. Mostly well, since it's one of the few times Insomniac Games decided to mix enemy tribes together. You're right. I just like the the Kirchu. I think the idea of the Kirchu is really cool. With uh, like a very, a very smart society of like engineers and inventors. That's also a little feral. Big fan of that concept. I just like the Kirchu. That, um, I can do that, that. Having pirates, Kirchu, and wild animals all in the same fights. Uh, we can do that one. Charge up quicker. Whoop, come on. Like, there's so many enemies that are one and done in the Ratchet series. I, I'm, I'm torn. Because I do like when there's enough, like, space on the disc for them to have unique enemies for every planet. Like, I, I like the idea that, you know, oh, these enemies are from here, you know? What am I doing? I can just do that. But also... I like the idea of things like the Tyranoids, where, like, as you continue the game, they change and they... There's, like, different rankings, quote-unquote, of them. Or, like, the Thugs for Less guys. I like the idea of a consistent, like, enemy type that you encounter. But, like, I like, I like when wildlife is one and done. You know, like, native species to a planet. Clank's losing his goddamn mind. Attention, inmate number 979B, Aperture Health. You are in violation of your doom statute 36A. Please refrain from escape. We are asking for the droid launcher. Come on, it's right this way. Uh, 
Personally, I wish more Ratchet and Clank, like, big bads would come back. I understand that, but I'm not personally looking... But I'm personally looking for more crazy fight scenarios. Yeah. I wish more Ratchet and Clank big bads would come back. I like... Uh, the one the the big bad that they do keep bringing back, trying not to, I I put these vods up on YouTube so I'm trying not to spoil anything for people who may or may not have experienced these games. I've noticed a lot of people jumping into Ratchet and Clank around like, the 2016 reboot or Rift Apart was a lot of people's first game, but you know the the one big bad that does keep coming back, I I like that but I just wish they would. Uh, Maybe give some love to some of the other villains. I think they've had a lot of interesting uh, big bads. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, that's definitely what's happening. Don't do it, Renford. It's not a present. They're lying to you. Hell yeah. Mmm. That's not gonna work. Damn you, shield enemies. Like, imagine trying to fight respawning Kirchu wheels while trying to kill a Levi Which Leviathan? The um the Leviathans that you would fight on uh Sargasso or the classic Leviathans from like Kabalia and uh the Apogee Space Station. Cause I would hate the flying ones. Classic Kabalian Apogee one. Fuck that. Nothing. Yeah, I can't. Okay. Since your eyes would need to focus in two areas, fast grounded ramming wheels, slow but spam heavy flying units. I would, in that instance, Raptor Launcher. Or Predator Launcher. Whatever version I'm on. I would just Raptor Launcher, just hold down the button, and I would focus only on avoiding attacks. I would let my... Or maybe the, the swarmers. The fire and forget bees. I would focus only on survival. Like, I feel a bunch of enemies could be used to create new types of fights. I think it would be interesting for arena fights. Like, imagine if there was a build-your-own-arena fight 
kind of mechanic where you could take enemy types from all over the game just to play test like different fights like just stick in different enemy types just to see how different combos would work of enemy types I think that could be very interesting Um, let's get the piece of the hollow or the, the thing, you know, the thing. Um, okay. Oh, I love the Dropids. I think they're so funny. Also, I haven't played Tools of Destruction in, in 2022-2023. When I did play, I removed Weapon Wheel pausing just to challenge myself further. Yeah, I've... I've, uh... I've disabled Weapon Wheel pausing on, um... Was it... Could you do it in both 2 and 3? I, I did it for earlier... I, I have done it for earlier Ratchet and Clank games. I don't know, there's just, it's just such a nice quality of life improvement, because I remember as a kid having issues with, like, Ratchet & Clank 1, which just didn't have it, and having issues with it as a kid. It's such a nice quality of life thing. Only done it for Tools of Destruction and a crack in time. Praxis, okay. Um, heading to a new, in the, heading to the Praxis sector. Is this an is there another uh Is there another space battle between the sectors? This results in me practicing weapon switching during side flipping mid fight. Last ship section, that's right. Man, I I just love a uh, Star Fox. Whoa, Clank! Check out that black hole. I think we just found our escape route. Oh dear. Why must we always choose between certain death and probable death? You know exactly why, Clank. Must be setting up an outpost there. Hold on. I want to leave these guys with a little parting gift. Kevin, he's setting course for the Pegasus outpost. That's messed up, Ratchet. Also, a crack in time new game plus is so easy on extreme IMO. Big agree. I think, uh... 
I think A Crack in Time is one of the few Ratchet and Clank games that, like, swings the pendulum in the wrong direction in terms of difficulty spike. Like, not to say that, like, other Ratchet and Clank games are too difficult on New Game Plus, but there's definitely, like... Especially for earlier Ratchet and Clank games, Bolt Economy is absolutely fucked. Bolt Economy in early Ratchet and Clank games is so bad. But A Crack in Time is just absolutely insane when it comes to, like, bolts and resources. So you, you are really, like, wanting for nothing in A Crack in Time. I still think it's a great game. I love, uh, I, I think every Ratchet and Clank game has something redeeming about it. Please don't make me. Alright, where's the last? There's got to be another one of those rainbow things, you know. The things to get the gold bolt. There's got to be another one of those. I'm sorry, I'll look at chat in just a second. I just want to make sure I don't miss this. Where is it? Eh, 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 eh. There we go. Okay. Regular new game. Regular new game. It's cracking time extreme on the other hand. Die nine hits with 300 ship. Cool game. Man. Isn't it... Isn't uh, this month, like, uh, the anniversary of uh, A Crack in Time? Maybe I can get to it on stream before the month is over. I'm not that far away from it. I'm playing them in order of release. I'm not that far away from a crack in time. Now approaching event horizon. Engaging proto shield. All right, and there should be one last boss fight. They have the worst names. Cool ship design, terrible name. Show me your ball. Also a crack in time. Third fight, post game one with... Yeah. I think... I think a crack in time is probably my, like, least favorite requirement for getting the uh, Insomniac Museum. There's... It just leaves a really bad taste in my mouth when they're, like, new game but not plus. You know what I mean?
Yeah. Like, if it had just been beat the game a second time, like, it just beat New Game Plus, that'd be fine, but... They make you just, like, start a new save. Although the Insomniac Museum in A Kraken Time does slap. Pew pew. Hell yeah. Alright, first order of business on Jacindu. Getting the goddamn box breaker. Every game, I miss it so much. Kurchu and pirates and wildlife and whatnot. The pirates are attacking Kurchu City. Ratchet, we must get to the dimensionator before Captain Slag does. All right. Oh, the blades are available here. Oh, the claws. And the negotiator. Mm. Tempting. Very tempting. I'll wait until the next armor set and then buy another weapon. I still have stuff to upgrade now, so... I always buy weapons the moment they appear. I I don't like getting hit real bad, so I usually wait until the next... I usually prioritize armor. No, I, I get it. Like, I, I used to do that a lot, and then... I don't know. I, I don't know what changed. I just, I just decided to start prioritizing armor, and I've gotten into this headspace where, like, so long as I still have stuff to level up... I don't need to buy more weapons. Like I got I got the buzz blades, I got the alpha disruptor, I got the pyro blaster. I'm fine. Once I start once I start leveling this stuff up and then it just becomes like a waste of XP if I'm not collecting it. Then yell. Ah, oh, there we go. Armor is a myth and tools of destruction. Yeah, but it looks cool. Oh boy, mega leech bombs. A joke how most people panic with New Game Plus armor and lose 65 of their health late game. I mean, to be fair, the point of New Game Plus is, hey, this is going to kick your ass. I like the leech bombs. I like a lot of the devices. I just hate that they're not weapons you know you can't level them up i think all of the devices are super helpful and i'm glad some of them like the groovatron and the mr zircon come back but realistically i just think devices are like wasted potential in what could have been some really cool weapons Like, I absolutely would have loved so many of the, 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 the Velasa, the, hang on, devices. Yeah, the Visicopter, 
like I love the Visibomb from Ratchet and Clank 1. The Visicopter would have been really cool if that was just a weapon to upgrade. The Transmorpher. This game's version of the, the, the transforming weapon, you know, the, the Sheepinator Morpho Ray, that kind of stuff. Wish it was and it's a bomb. Like it's a it's a penguin bomb. That's awesome. I just wish it was a weapon. That's just that's just me. Personally, the only devices I use anymore are leech bombs. Help staying in an aggressive fight. Oh yeah, and I, I I definitely think late game new game late in the new game plus, like you you need like the mega leech bombs and stuff just to stay up. This game can get pretty brutal towards the... No, not what I wanted to... Okay, no. Go to my... There we go. I should probably rearrange my... Uh, quick select wheels... From earlier, no quick select. Keep my quick select clean at all times. Yeah, no, I can. I can imagine if you don't have the quick select pause enabled, I would only have one wheel. I would not bother with like the three separate wheels that they give you. But like, I don't use. Gadgets. So this is page one. Page one is fine. Page one is all of our gadgets. Um, now that I have the pyroblaster with uh, raritanium, I don't need shock ravager. Um, I think I'll still keep that one there. Um, leveled up, leveled up, leveled up. We can do. Yeah, let's just let's just remove these to get rid of the that third page. Don't need it. Come on. Grab grab the okay. Um just in case. Yeah, I needed that. They're fine. Hell yeah. Alright, um... Break some boxes, and we're almost through here, right? Pretty sure. Should just be like one more room as far as I can remember.
Still didn't manage to do a no death playthrough. Two deaths, one happened trying to figure out what happened to some glitchy crates. And this is where I charged boots into water on Mukau. Second visit to Mukau. Damn. Yeah. I have. I died. I think I died twice on the tutorial level, if I'm being honest. It's just been a while since I played this game. What messes me up is that uh, Crouch is R2, when in previous games it's been R1. So just, I keep forgetting the controls, which is a bad look. We finally have the box breaker. Tools of Destruction was my first Ratchet and Clank game. It's a good one. It's it's definitely up there. One of my favorites. I I grew up like I started with the original one. I've just been, you know, playing these games from the beginning. So there's. So a bunch of my gaming biases can be linked to this game. All right, kid. What can we do you? Understandable. My phone can stop going crazy. And that would be real cool. Neat. I'm just gonna If they want to use their shields that's fine Having the knowledge of each fight can be winnable slash everything is dodgeable is something that I had the nasty habit of having. You have discovered another piece of the Gadgetron Hollow Plan. Neat. Yeah, I definitely think this game occupies a weird space in my opinion because, like, I grew up on a lot of like the PS1, PS2 platformers, like the 3D platformers. And Ratchet and Clank started in that same vein, but then evolved to be more like run and gun heavy. So it occupies this weird space of like 3D shooter with some platforming now. I don't know. It. It's gone through such an interesting evolution, in my opinion. But, like, I I can't play, like, it's, just because it is also designed, it's rated E, this game's rated E10. It's designed for, like, the family, families in mind, quote and unquote. There's definitely some, you know, jokes not for kids in this game, but. I mean, like, when I played Doom Immortal, Doom Eternal... I wasn't fa I wasn't phased by the platforming and all the health management. Oh yeah. I know some people had issues with the platforming. People were very confused by it in a Doom game, which I get, but I mean like it's just a different skill set. Like just because this is my go to franchise and they didn't really implement a sort of dodge roll mechanic until the most recent game. I am absolute, like, dog dirt at games, at, like, Souls-like Souls, Souls -like games. I have tried so many different uh, From Software games, 
and I really want to enjoy them. I think aesthetically they're very cool games. Just, um, the fucking, excuse me? God damn. It's just a rapidly, I don't want to say like disappearing skill set, but they just don't make games like this anymore. People confused by Doom, yet there's a 1993 style Doom level that is literally tightrope. Bad time. Sure. I forgot what a lot of the late level skill points were, so I'll take that. Oh boy, it's my favorite. It's my favorite enemy type in the whole game. That is so infamous, one of the speedrunning historians covered that level. I love when something in a game is so specifically bad. You know, there, there's whole critiques, you know, like this can make a break, make or break a speedrun. That style of, of, or that level of infamy, I think is so funny. This guy's stuck. Yeah, stuck on the geometry. Cool. Like, there's certain Jack 3 levels that I know about, like certain Jack 3 missions. Late game that can just absolutely tank a run. This was always one of my favorite parts of the game. I loved the destructible environments that they introduced. I know it's a scripted event, but... The pirate ship crashing into the Kirchu station. Big thumbs up from me. So that is one of the best and actually... Mixes enemy types. Exactly. It's only stealing if you leave somebody alive. Such great advice. Alright, boss fight. No. We have a lot of money. We can... I think we can hold off a little bit. We have stuff to level up. We got money. Man, I remember back in 2007 when they were first showing off this game, and this boss fight was a part of a lot of the marketing. Like, the, the whole level for the boss fight, the, the sheer scale of it. I remember this was a big part of the marketing. This boss fight and the tutorial level Kerwan was basically all we, we saw. Before this game came out. It 
it's it's probably if I'm being honest, like cool design, cool boss fight implementing, like it implements more than just the weapons of the game. Like the combat of Ratchet and Clank is one of the big selling points, like all the weapons and stuff. But it utilizes two different boot types. We have the grind boots and then the magna boots later. The gravity boots. It also upside down boss fight. Yeah, it's it implements enough of the other stuff. It it feels so fleshed out and and realized instead of just we're gonna make a circular room and put a guy there. So many boss fights can just be boiled down to circular room with a guy there. That's fine. Shit. Less fine. Less fine. Alright. We're just gonna... It's fine. All right, we're about to lose the... <laughs> Will this reach him? It will. Damn it. I was trying to get I was trying to get down before he hit. Son of a bitch. Is that just back to the ship? Yeah. Oh, there we go. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Almost had him. I also think visualizing boss damage is inter like they couldn't do a whole lot of it in older Ratchet and Clank games. Um, only some bigger enemies had like armor that would fall off, but a lot of enemies in Tools of Destruction onward have like the destructible armor, so you can see you can physically see the damage you're doing to a boss fight. Like this guy's got the th the, the four green tanks on the side of his face that are destroyed one at a time as you're doing damage to him. Big fan of that. Yeah, that's gonna knock me down. That's fine. Oh, I got him. I got him now. He's going to turn and destroy his, destroy his guys. Yeah, we're fine. Big chilling. Big chilling. All right. Easy clap.
It's a hat. That kerchief must have been protecting the device. Look at this thing. I've never seen anything like it. It's impressive. This is incredible. That's it. I think they followed us. Come on. No, we've got to work. I see ye have something that belongs to me. Now be a good lad and hand it over. Now why don't you try and take it, Grog Breath? You wouldn't begrudge an old pirate his booty, would you? That'd make old Petey a bit twitchy with the blade. All right, Captain. Say the word, and it's the locker for our friend. Try to follow us, and I'll gut ye bow to stern. morning my brother in christ it is three in the afternoon <laughs> she has packed slag's trajectory to a fleet hidden in the ooblet passage coordinates acquired yeah passage. doom and ratchet and clank two very different flavors robots losing chunks of armor that is a bit different than what is that enemies can lose ribs muscles flesh yeah all right that's going to do it for me, though, for the stream. Uh, I got some stuff I got to do uh, before tonight. But that was fun. We, we made it pretty far. Ratchet and Clank still did create stuff like Agorians with all their armor. Yeah, but again, it's it's guys losing armor, not losing body parts. That That's kind of where I think they draw the line. That's going to do it for me. Thank you to people who stopped by and said hi in chat. I always super appreciate that. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. These VODs air live on my Twitch channel. If you're watching this on Twitch, these VODs go up on my YouTube channel. All that stuff is linked together. Go live announcements. If you drop me a follow, you know when I go live on Twitch. Uh, go live announcements are also on my Twitter and the YouTube community page. Again, thank you to everybody who stopped by. I really appreciate it. Be good. Be kind. Treat people the way you want to be treated, and I'll catch you in the next one.